Welcome back to more FPL content. This will be the best wildcard team for game week 10, and there are several changes from the previous editions of the best wildcard team. On screen, you can see Draft Hound and their player rankings for the next three game weeks. Salah is now top with Haaland, Palmer, Saka, and Bumo, Diaz, Son, Gavardio, Trent, and Watkins all in the top 10, and some of them do feature, of course, in my 50 man squad for the best wildcard team. I'll also discuss some alternatives just in case you can't afford the team, and also just if you want to go for a bit of a different structure. Smash the like button and subscribe for new if you enjoy my content. Our aim is to get this video to the 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards 35 subscribers. We had 29k last Tuesday during the UCL Fantasy deadline stream and keep your eyes peeled for UCL Fantasy content ahead of match day four and also the team selection, my transfer plans, as well as the deadline stream for FPL as well. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. My squad value is 102.6 million, but everybody has different selling prices, purchase value, and all of this stuff. So it will vary for everybody. But in each position, I'll discuss alternatives and not just, you know, highlight one goalkeeper, for example, and that's it. I'll also discuss other options I'd consider on the wild card. And I might even include some underperformers in the last couple of game weeks who have good fixtures or the potential to turn things around. But let's start off with that position and pick two goalkeepers, five defenders, five midfielders and three forwards. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. There are four goalkeepers worth looking at in FPL and Robert Sanchez hasn't featured so far this season in one of these best wildcard team podcasts. But this is the first time and I think it's worth it. The next two fixtures don't look great against Man United away with Eric Ten Hag sacked and we could see a manager bounce even with the interim boss Ruud van Nistelrooy. But in game week 11, you've got Arsenal at home, which also looks very tough on paper. But afterwards, Chelsea have a great run of fixtures up until the end of the year, essentially. And I think Robert Sanchez is the best way of covering Chelsea defensively. I wouldn't be going for Rhys James, who is been very impressive in the last couple of game weeks getting consistent starts as well but I just wouldn't go there with his injury record and I think it's only a matter of time before he picks up another problem and ultimately there could be rotation in that position regardless in the coming weeks with a busier schedule across all competitions so I'm going for Robert Sanchez but that doesn't mean I've given up on Anana, who has featured in a lot of the recent videos, especially in the best wildcard team. I think Sells is a good option, but Nottingham Forest's fixtures turn for the worst very soon. David Ra remains an excellent choice, but the form hasn't been great for the Gunners from a defensive perspective since game week six. And the other one is Allison, once he returns from injury after the next international break. Those five goalkeepers are the best in FPL for me, but of course, if Allison, you'd want to wait a little bit longer. And Robert Sanchez and Raya have tough games coming up in the next two, then they have a great run of fixtures for several months. So I think they are arguably the best goalkeepers to buy on a wild card, but I still think Anana and Sells offer great value at different price points too. So if you can't afford Robert Sanchez and ultimately need 0.2 million more or 0.1 million more, I think Sells could be that better option. But ultimately, I don't think you really can rely on a 4 million goalkeeper to start week in, week out. Speaking of which, Fabianski started for the first time this season in the Premier League and he did very well in that 2-1 win over Man United, but he made a few mistakes. I think the chance that Dallo missed, it was an open goal essentially. Fabianski made an error there and he almost tipped it into his own net from a corner. But Fabianski can have these moments, but ultimately he's a good shot stopper and also very impressive with penalty saves. So if he can continue to start for West Ham, he could be an absolute bargain at 4 million. And he's been in all of my best wildcard team videos as the second choice goalkeeper. And I think it makes sense to go for him. He's by far the most likely to start at this price tag. And Ariola hasn't had a good start to this campaign. So it makes sense to go for Fabianski as your second choice, but I wouldn't recommend going for Fabianski and another 4 million goalkeeper and starting him week in, week out because West Ham leave a lot to be desired from a defensive perspective. So ultimately, if you want to go for a main choice of goalkeeper, I think Sanchez, Sells, Anana, Raya and Alisson when he's fit are the five best goalkeepers in the game. Trent Alexander-Arnold was the highest scoring defender in the game up until very recently when Virgil van Dijk scored against Arsenal for the equaliser in that 2-2 thriller. And I still think Trent is worth the extra million over Virgil van Dijk and even two million more than Canate. But I can see a lot of people going towards the Frenchman 
and going for the cheapest way to cover Liverpool defensively. And they have considered quite a few goals and chances in the last two games since Alisson has been injured and the fixtures have turned for the worse. But I still think Liverpool get plenty of clean sheets from now until the end of the season, but not necessarily in the next two to three game weeks. This would be a long-term punt. And I still believe Trent has been very unfortunate not to get more attacking returns this season. Only the one assist, because I think players like Jota have missed some guilt edge chances with those that were created by Trent Alexander-Arnold, and with that would have come some bonus points as well. So I think Trent is worth the money. He did go down in price to 7 million, but he remains the most expensive defender in the game. You can go for Van Dijk or Kanate if you wish, but I certainly wouldn't go for Robertson as there could be rotation with Simicas from time to time. And ultimately, I think Trent is the best defender in FPL still. But of course, when Arsenal defenders come good and they're injured players return, I think Gabriel and even Ben White, Saliba could give Trent a run for his money, but probably not enough for the foreseeable future. Next up will be Rico Lewis, who is still at a very good price point at 4.8 million. You could argue that Gavardio is the best Man City defender, but he's also 6.2, 6.3 million. And I think Lewis offers better value so long as he continues to start on a regular basis. And I believe he will, but there will be rotation for all Man City defenders. That includes Gavardio and Rico Lewis, of course, but if you're kind of ranking them in terms of the most nailed on Man C defenders, it'd be Gavardio first, Akanji second, and then you're looking at Lewis in third or fourth. He can get assists and bonus points, which I really like about him. He's a young defender with a lot of potential, but this season he has been a bit shaky defensively from time to time. But ever since Roger got injured back in game week five, I always saw that as an opportunity for Rico Lewis to get more starts, and that's been the case in the last couple of weeks. But a benching against Bournemouth or Brighton is certainly not out of the cards and you need to have defensive depth to cover for players like Rico Lewis who aren't the most nailed on in the grand scheme of things. My third defender is someone I've recommended a lot in recent wildcard and transits podcasts and that's going to be eight Nuri but bear in mind he's on four yellow cards one more before gimmick 19 means he's suspended for one match so that's going to be a big risk and if you've got eight Nuri and Rico Lewis you definitely want three other good defenders who can fill in week in week out especially in the next couple of game weeks so you have no issues with your defensive depth. Next up is another four point family and defender and that's going to be Aina and technically eight Nuri and Lewis are no longer priced at 4.5 million as eight Nuri has gone up to 4.6 and Rico Lewis is also 4.8 but I think either Aina or Milenkovic are great options and I'd rather go for Nottingham Forest defensively with them instead of Sells because if you look at Arsenal and Man City away in the next five game weeks that's going to be a bit more difficult to bench if you've got Sells in goal compared to a fourth or fifth defender like Aino Milenkovic who rotate with your other options but with Fabianski potentially being the main goalkeeper for West Ham this season you could make a case that Sells is still worth going for and you can drop him for Fabianski when they face Arsenal and Man City away. And finally, I'm going for a very cheap defender here in Mikalenko, who also started this season at 4.5 million and only the one return so far, which came in game week eight against Ipswich Town. Ultimately, he has been very disappointing, but I think Everton's fixtures for the next four or five game weeks are still very impressive. But be very careful because from game week 15 to 18, they face the likes of Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea. And you definitely want to avoid all Everton assets throughout that run. Even McNeil in the midfield, in Dio Calvert-Lewin up front, Jordan Pickford in goal and even Mikalenko in the defensive line. They might give a shock in one of those games and get a clean sheet. They did it last season against Liverpool. But I think with Mikalenko, it's really a four to five game week punt. Then you look to bench him between game weeks 15 to 18. But with his price point, I don't think that's an issue whatsoever. We're going heavy in the midfield with this wildcard team with several premium options and Mohamed Salah has been the best of the lot with 84 FPL points, incredible underlying stats as I delved into in the Transits podcast and I think you'll be the second or first highest scoring player in the game and probably get even more than Erling Haaland and that's the problem if you go for the Man City forward. He needs to do more than the likes of Salah and Palmer to outscore them because he's a forward and I think those two midfielders are better for bonus points. So that's always going to be kind of a disadvantage. And then when you factor in the price tag of Erling Haaland at 15.4 million, he needs to do a lot to justify his place in your FPL team. And don't get me wrong, you can still go for him and he'll get plenty of goals. He'll definitely win the golden boot unless he gets injured. So I think you can definitely make a case for keeping him. But in terms of balance and having a very strong 15-man squad, there is certainly a case for going without him and spreading the funds 
in each position. And I think Salah has to be in your team no matter what, even if you go for Haaland up front. And if you're asking me to go for Salah or Palmer, that's going to be a bit more difficult. And my preference would be a Palmer, but ultimately you'd have both of them in your setup from game week 10 until the foreseeable future. It could even be until the very end of the campaign. I think both of them offer tremendous value. They're talismanic figures on penalties, great creativity and goal scoring stats. And they're going to get so many goals and assists this season. There's no doubt about it. And rotation will never be an issue. Not for this calendar year at least. There will be the odd benching here and there, which is inevitable, but they will get 34 plus Premier League starts unless something goes horribly wrong. The third midfielder is going to be Saka, who is another one who's very nailed on in the Arsenal team. He played against Liverpool and got a nine-pointer when many sold him with that orange flag that we saw throughout the week. But Saka can still do well against Newcastle and Chelsea, although admittedly, I don't think his ceiling is very high in these two away games. I think Arsenal will score two goals maximum in each match, and it wouldn't surprise me if we saw a nil-nil or a one-nil result in one of those games, but longer term, you'd want Sack in place from gaming 12 onwards. And I think he's a better FPL asset than Phil Foden at this moment in time. And apart from Palmer and Salah, I think he's comfortably the third best midfielder in FPL. But it is a certain Brian Imbumo who is the third highest screen midfielder in the game right now. He has been incredible so far this season. And the underlying stats, the penalty duties, the great fixtures, you have it all in abundance. But Brentford's fixtures do turn for the worse around game week 15 and you could make a case for selling Mbumo by that stage. But I think he's fixture proof and you could easily keep him throughout that difficult period for the Bees. And Mbumo is the best Brentford asset, although Wissa is another great choice you can go for up front. I wouldn't even mind that offensive double up with both Mbumo and Wissa. That's a great duo who will score many goals this season and most importantly of all, give you a very high ceiling with the bonus points. Now, as an Mbuma owner, I believe he was fairly fortunate in game week nine with the nature of both goals, particularly the winner in the 98th minute. But you get that sort of luck sometimes in FPL. You need it to do very well. And Mbuma is a great choice. You'd even want to captain him in one of these game weeks coming up. Maybe not in game week 10 necessarily against Fulham away, which will be a tough game for Brentford. But Mbuma got a big return at Craven Cottage last season. So don't put it past him to get another goal to add to his very impressive tally already this season. And finally, I'm going for a mid-price to budget midfielder in Garnacho, with Man United having a new manager, technically an interim for now, but we could see a big reaction and change. And Chelsea home doesn't look great, but from gimmicks 11 to 13, United have sensational fixtures against the likes of Everton and Ipswich Town, and Garnacho could really come to the surface. He is my favourite Man United attacker, period, and possibly asset across all positions, although Anana is a good choice in goal, and the likes of Mazraoui and Dallo are good defenders to have in FPL due to clean sheets, assists, and bonus points from time to time. But Garnacho for me is the most exciting to own if he plays on the left consistently and doesn't face rotation with the likes of Rashford and Amadiallo. I think he's the best United attacker to go for, even over Bruno Fernandes, Hoyland, Xerxes, and Marcus Rashford. Nicholas Jackson has had a good season so far with plenty of decent performances and a lot of goals so far with great underlying stats and the fixtures long term look fantastic. My only concern with Jackson would be the three yellow cards and the same goes for Cole Palmer. Two more before gimmick 19 means a one match suspension and if you've got eight Nuri on top this could definitely cause some issues in a couple of gimmicks time and you'd have to hope that not all three of them get that suspension at the same time. It's very unlikely, but still something that could happen. So it's always worth mentioning just in case. Now, apart from Haaland and Watkins, I think Jackson is probably the third best forward in FPL overall. And at this price point, you've got Solanke and Havertz, but I think Jackson is showing much better form. He's getting bonus points and I think his stats are just incredible all round. Decent creativity numbers, but especially in terms of shots and chances, he's always getting into those positions. That's his best quality. And I wouldn't mind doubling up on Chelsea offensively or even with Robert Sanchez in goal going for free Chelsea assets from Gimmick 12 onwards. The timing might not be great because they face Man United away who could have a manager bounce and then Arsenal at home. But beyond those two, you have to look at the bigger picture and Chelsea can go on a great run until the end of the year. Let's now complete this forward line with two budget strikers and Cunha is going to be one of them. You can go for Strand Larsen instead. There is a 1 million difference in price tag, but I think Cunha will get more bonus points and he's got the assist threat, which he hasn't really shown yet in terms of actual assists, but the creativity is certainly there 
with over 11 key passes and four big chance created. So I think Cunha is definitely worth that extra million because of bonus points alone. Then you add on top the goal scoring rate, also the fact that he's kind of fixture proof. He scored a hat trick at Stamford Bridge last season and also at the Emirates he scored a goal. He can definitely produce in any given moment and I wouldn't mind starting him in most games this season. Now let's complete this with Wissa and another double up since we've got two Wolves players, two from Brentford, three from Chelsea and two from Liverpool. We've got quite a lot of double and triple ups here but it's still a nice balance overall in my opinion and I don't mind this duo because Brentford are scoring a lot of goals and their games have been very entertaining this season. I think Wissa and Mbuma are the best Brentford assets by far. I'm not a big fan of Flecken in goal or Vandenberg, Collins, Pinnock at the back. I just don't think they get enough clean sheets. In fact, they haven't kept one so far this season. So if you want to invest in Brentford, it's all about the midfield and forward line. You do have some alternatives like Fabio Cavaglia, but it's all about Mbuma and Wissa. They all get the consistency, the high ceiling and the bonus points. So they're the only ones really worth mentioning in a best 15 man squad. There are other options though in the midfield and you might argue that this team has too much squad depth foremost and you're going to have benching headaches every single week. And that's why I'm going to show you the starting 11 and the captaincy to kind of assure you with gimmick 10 at least and then some possible downgrades you could make or some modifications to really suit this team to your preference. No matter which first choice goalkeeper you go for in game week 10, there is certainly a debate to start Fabianski instead, facing Nottingham Forest away. I don't think West Ham will keep a clean sheet here, but the fixture looks better on paper than Man United away with Eric Ten Hag now sacked. But I'm going for Robert Sanchez because he has a high ceiling as proven this season on multiple occasions. He can get a lot of saves and he can produce a double digit haul out of nowhere. So I'm going for Sanchez in goal and a back three of Trent, Lewis and Aitnuri a midfield four of Salah, Palmer, Saka and Mbumo, and a front three of Cunha, Jackson and Wissa, with a very strong bench of Garnacho, Mikalenko and Aina. But it has to be said, you could definitely make a case for a few changes like Mikalenko over eight Nuri this week, Fabianski over Sanchez, and maybe Garnacho instead of one of the Chelsea attackers. That is another possibility. The expected points is quite low because certain players like Wissa have zero expected points. That hasn't really been updated yet based on their recent fitness and obviously being available now. In terms of the captaincy though, I would favour Salah. If you don't go for Erling Haaland, I definitely would go in the direction of Salah. And even if he had both, I'd be tempted to go for the Egyptian at home to Brighton. We saw a few weeks ago Palmer and the damage he did in the first half against Brighton and that high line, four goals in 45 minutes. I don't think Salah will necessarily replicate that, but he could definitely get a big return and a double digit haul very easily and Bournemouth could cause some problems to Man City although I'm not too optimistic about their chances. Palmer's the vice although there are some other decent choices like in Buma and Saka but I wouldn't really recommend them for the captaincy. I think those fixtures are quite tough and I don't see many goals in the Arsenal versus Newcastle game in the early kickoff and of course we all know what Gandhi says about those scenarios. But let's now show a few modifications. Maybe you want to go for Ollie Watkins instead of Jackson so we could go for something like this instead. There aren't too many changes. It really would come down to Jackson to Watkins. Also Buenanote coming in for Garnacho, which could help you with your benching headaches. And also downgrading Mikalenko to a 4 million choice like a Colley. I've got 0.1 million left in the bank with this squad. But as mentioned before, you could downgrade Sanchez to Sells if you want to find funds in the goalkeeper position. And then in defensive line, maybe one of Gabriel if he's fit, Saliba, Canati or Van Dijk instead of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Not to mention you could go for Mikalenko instead of Recolocerate Nuri if you wish, but I do have this preference for the players that I've discussed throughout most of this video. In the midfield, if you want to make another downgrade, maybe Saka downgraded to Foden for now, or Huming Son, who's a great option for the next two game weeks. And in the forward line, of course, a very easy switch would be Watkins to Jackson, but also you could look at Kai Havertz and these budget fours like Chris Wood, Raul Jimenez and all the others I've discussed in recent best wildcard team videos and podcasts. And are you really set on going for Erling Haaland in the long term despite his recent struggles? Only one goal in the last four game weeks, which is very surprising considering the start of the season he had. He is still viable on a wildcard or with your normal transfers. You could definitely keep him in the long term. But with the fixtures looking worse now, there is certainly a case to maybe offload him and spread the funds going for Watkins and Salah instead. I could see a lot of people making such moves in the next couple of weeks. But as highlighted earlier, Aston Villa face Tottenham and Liverpool away up next and even Chelsea away 
within the next four game weeks. Only one decent fixture against Crystal Palace at home in that time frame. But I think Ollie Watkins is fixture proof. I could see him doing well against Tottenham and or Chelsea. He has done it before, especially against Chelsea last season. So there are so many options in FPL. We all know this. And it's all about identifying the pool of players you'd kind of want to target, looking at the upcoming fixture swings and really honing in on those assets and also kind of targeting the opponents, especially those like Southampton, maybe Wolves you could argue, but I think they'll bounce back with the upcoming fixtures. And even if they don't, the likes of Aitneri and Cunha are good FPL choices with bonus points potential and a lot of attacking threats. So I'd still recommend at least one of them on a best wildcard team. Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this video to the 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards 35 subscribers and beyond. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and check all the other links in the description below for my Patreon and the championships for early access to my videos, amongst many other perks, the Discord server, FPL League, DraftHound, as well as Spotify. They have a five-star review on my podcast. It would go a long way to support my channel. I wish you all the best of luck for Game Week 10. Keep your eyes peeled for FPL and user fantasy content throughout the next week or so, and I'll see you next time.